Hello, dear patients and uh, their loved ones. This uh, lecture is devoted to Hodgkin's lymphoma in adults. The purpose of this lecture is educational only, because um, all treatment is administrated always by the attendant physician. Hmm? I will talk a few words about what is lymphoma, how to make a diagnosis, what's the value of lymph node biopsy, CT or PET CT scans, what is uh, the fourth stage, is it so bad, how patients with the Hodgkin's lymphoma are treated, what is PET adapted therapy, how to prepare for treatment, uh, some words about women's health, uh, the role of vaccination and uh, what to do after the end of the treatment. But uh, before we will talk about the Hodgkin's lymphoma, a few words about uh, general information of lymphoma as a blood system disorder. Lymphomas are a group of malignant diseases of the blood system. All patients uh, with lymphoma has a mandatory manifestation. Uh, even uh, only one have to be. The enlargement of lymph nodes, enlargement of the spleen, lymphocytosis of blood more than 5,000 per microliter, and uh, all damage of uh, other organs and tissue when lymphoma acts like a usual solid tumor. Patients uh, with lymphoma sometimes uh, have um, so-called B symptoms. They uh, include profuse night sweating when the patient have to change uh, clothes at night, weight loss by more than 10% uh, in, in half a year, and um, high temperature in evening and at night more than 28 degrees Celsius or more than 104 Fahrenheit. How the diagnosis of lymphoma is made? When a doctor sees the lymph node enlarging, he usually decides to take a biopsy to take a tissue fragment for histological and immune histochemical analysis. The tissue fragmentum is specially prepared, then uh, cut uh, on uh, uh, very thin slides and after that put into microscope where a pathologist uh, examined them. The doctor usually sees the, the different cells which I draw as the different figures. But when the doctor uh, sees the some um, uh, identical cells, they, he suspect, suspects uh, lymphoma, some maybe tumor process. But how to prove it? Uh, for proving, uh, we usually use the special colors, so-called immune histochemical analysis where we color these, uh, these uh, cells by different colors. And if the patterns is uh, identical, we understand that these cells looks like each other like fingerprints. And these patients are referred to hematologist or oncologist. How to put the correct stage? The additional examination of patients with lymphoma always uh, includes computed tomography of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis to look for additional large lymph nodes which uh, cannot be seen uh, from the um, superficial examination. And after that, we can talk about stages. The hematologists uh, usually use the enable staging system, which differs from the oncology TNM staging system. When oncologists talk about uh, the fourth stage, they usually consider the best uh, palliative or symptomatic treatment. But in hematology, stage one, two, three, or even four uh, have the um, comparable frequency of cure, of recovery. So, um, we uh, divide our patients on the st early stages, 
on the patients with early stage lymphoma 1 or 2 and advanced stage 3 or 4. And uh, in uh, that situation, the high stage is only shows, uh, shows us where the lymph nodes are. Because, uh, I will repeat, the frequency of cure at all stages is comparable. So, we talked about general consideration information of uh, lymphoma diagnosing. Now, let's talk about Hodgkin's lymphoma. Hodgkin's lymphoma is one of malignant lymphomas with uh, a uh, good prognosis now. Uh, all patients uh, usually has uh, enlarged lymph nodes, and uh, some of them uh, can have, uh, for example, calf due to compression of uh, bronchitis with nodes, with nodes if uh, these lymph nodes are localized in the chest. And half of patients with Hodgkin lymphoma has B symptoms. For staging, we usually use computer tomography or positron emission tomography. I'll say some words a little bit later about this method. Uh, sometimes the doctor uh, wants, wants to know if lymphoma cells are in the bone marrow. So uh, we take bone marrow analysis. And sometimes we count prognostic risk, uh, so-called international prognostic score, which uh, includes age, sex, stage, value of hemoglobin, and blood leukocytes. IPS sometimes is necessary to define the best initial treatment for such patients. What is positron emission tomography? Uh, this uh, method uh, assesses not only the enlargement of lymph nodes or organ lesions, but it also can assess the local metabolism because tumor cells uh, have more intensive uh, metabolism. And uh, sometimes PET helps to avoid bone marrow trephine biopsy because uh, it can uh, subside this method. So PET scan uh, permits us to determine the stage more precisely. So we talked about the staging of lymphoma and uh, we are ready to start chemotherapy. But uh, sometimes uh, our patients ask us uh, how do they need to prepare the treatment? How do they need to change their lifestyle or diet? A lot of doctors all over the world um, advise to vaccinate their patients in case pneumococcus, hemophilus, flu, and coronavirus, because uh, during chemotherapy the immunity a little bit um, goes down compared to the healthy people. So it's better to protect our patients from these infections. And uh, one consideration more. Uh, a lot of patients with lymphomas, with Hodgkin's lymphoma, are young, who plan uh, to get children in the future. So a few words about fertility preservation. Uh, fertility preservation is a very important uh, thing. And uh, for men, mm, the career preservation of sperm is simple and uh, cheap method, which doesn't uh, need to delay the chemotherapy. For women, the situation is a little bit more complicated because uh, the best uh, method is to freeze very small parts of ovaries. But uh, this uh, action needs uh, a few days to take special pills and a small operation. Mm, nevertheless, uh, the cryopreservation of ovarian tissue is now the best method. In the previous years, uh, uh, doctors used hormonal contraceptives to uh, sleep the ovaries. But now, from the modern uh, position of the science, this method uh, is proved to be ineffective. But during the, my 15 years, I saw a lot of uh, healthy children which were born after chemotherapy without any preserved fertility. Now some words about diet. Uh, there are many diets uh, offered uh, in the internet, but from the point of view of modern science, a specialized diet is useless. Food should be delicious and well-fed 
tolerates treatment easier, but without or written. Nevertheless, uh, it's better to discuss the diet with the attendant physician. So, what about sports and physical activity? It uh, strengthens muscles and bones, improves quality of life, and helps to tolerate treatment. So, a bicycle, maybe jogging, is very good for patients with lymphoma. But exhaustion is harmful. What about COVID infection? The pandemic continues and uh, it's very important to protect our patients. What to do? Vaccination uh, is uh, now the best uh, option for protection before chemotherapy. The second point is to avoid contact with patients with acute respiratory symptoms. The environment of a patient should be healthy. Hospitals now is the place where a lot of patients, a lot of patients with the infections, including COVID, uh, is coming. So it's better to receive outpatient treatment. But if uh, the patient with Hodgkin lymphoma uh, gets the COVID infection, so the chemotherapy should be interrupted during active course. So, we talked about uh, diagnosing, last lifestyle, diet of patients with lymphoma. Now, let's talk about their treatment. Hematologists use lines or steps of chemotherapy. And uh, the next uh, step uh, is considered if the previous uh, appeared to be ineffective. So, what's the initial therapy of patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma? The main courses are ABVD and BACOP. BACOP baseline, two week or escalated. There are some modifications. ABVD is less effective but also less toxic. It uh, consists only uh, from four drugs that are infused one time every two weeks. BACOP uh, consists of seven drugs. And uh, the patients uh, should uh, take pills for one or two weeks. Biocop is more effective, although much more toxic. What is the best options? The standard approach in a lot of countries is ABVD for the early stages and Biocop for the advanced stages. But if the second line treatment available, so, uh, in a lot of countries, only ABVD is used. Why? Because uh, ABVD is less effective, but uh, the second line therapy is more effective in such patients. Biocop uh, is more effective initially, but the second line will be less effective in um, patients who failed the Biocop treatment. So, the total survival in patients treated with ABVD and Biocop will be the same in case of availability of the second-line treatment. Uh, why uh, we um, try to avoid the Biocop? Uh, there, uh, there is the certain problem of delayed complications, especially the second tumor, and uh, it is very um, pronounced especially in biocop treatment. And these patients after ABVD and biocop have certain risks to get the delayed heart failure after a lot of years after completion of the treatment. So all over the world uh, uh, the new efforts are performed to try to avoid overtreating of the patients. Is it possible to improve the standard approach? The gold standard of treatment now is PET-guided therapy for advanced stage lymphoma. What is it? The patient uh, usually gets two ABVD or two Biocop, depending on the IPS, and then we perform PET scan. If PET uh, uh, shows uh, total recovery, the patient gets two more consolidative ABVD courses, but if PET scan shows the residual 
pet positive tumor lesions, we have to shift to four biocop escalated uh, courses plus irradiation, understanding all risks and benefits of such treatment. PET uh, can uh, uh, help us uh, in the uh, defining of the radiation therapy. Uh, a lot of patients uh, has residual masses of after chemotherapy and it's no good, no bad. In previous years, we irradiated every residual masses. But now we can do PET and uh, if there is no uh, evidence of disease, we can finish the treatment. If there are some pet positive uh, lesions, we have to irradiate them. Irradiation also has um, certain delayed complications, so, so the emitting of the irradiation is a very good option. So, when we begin to use the PET scan to understand the necessity of the irradiation, the number of irradiated patients failed 10 times. PET permits to achieve optimal balance between efficacy and toxicity of uh, our chemotherapy. So, we talked about ABVD and the Biocorp as the initial uh, therapy. We talked about the value of PET scan, but sometimes the first line failed. So, what uh, options uh, does the patient have? to cure his Hodgkin's lymphoma. The first uh, method is to change the drugs. And uh, the patient usually, usually gets cytorubine or platinum-containing uh, chemotherapy, ice, gemog, strap, or some others. They usually are the same in uh, terms of uh, toxicity and efficacy. So, every hospital use what it uh, likes more. But, if we see the response, we have to consolidate it by high-dose therapy with autologous stem cell support, so-called autologous bone marrow transplant. Bone marrow transplant uh, sounds a little bit worrying or scared, so some words about this method. From the very beginning of uh, chemotherapy, uh, doctors firstly understood that the more chemo you give, the better result you achieve. But the complications were also very severe. The main of them were uh, low immunity and high risk of uh, severe infections. So the problem was how to preserve immunity. This problem was solved in the 16th years of the last century, when uh, we began to freeze the stem cells and uh, to reinfuse them after the completion of a short course of chemo. Uh, stem cells are the mother cells. They can uh, deliver the new blood, which uh, uh, Lead, leads to fast recovering after high dose chemotherapy from months to weeks. And uh, this uh, led to decreasing of the infection complications. And now the percent of severe complications after bone marrow transplant is uh, something like 2 percent, the same as, for example, acute appendicitis. This technology uh, led to, to recovery of the more than half of patients who previously had no chances at all. And uh, when this technology appeared, it uh, began to um, spread all over the world. And now about 25,000 of uh, autologous uh, bone marrow transplant per year is performed, and half of these patients are patients with lymphomas. But how um, doctors uh, collect the stem cells? There are two main ways. The first is to aspirate the 
stem cells from the bone marrow, direct aspiration. But, uh, and the second is uh, on uh, my screen. We see the patient who uh, is a donor of stem cells. Their blood uh, is filtered in a special machine and uh, stem cells are filtered into their pack. The procedure lasts for two or three hours, one or two, maximum three times every day. The patient usually feels good. Uh, he can uh, watch TV or read a book. The main problem is toilet because uh, the machine is quite heavy. But this uh, problem is uh, quite easy to solve. Uh, how the stem cells are infused? They are infused uh, as a, a usual blood pack because stem cells even uh, going into the bloodstream know where their house, where, where the, uh, their house is and they colonize the bone again and gives, give the healthy blood again. Unfortunately, uh, there are very few patients uh, who failed the first and the second line. And uh, what uh, can we do in that situation? Mm, there are some opportunities. The first is our genic bone marrow transplantation, where, where the main accent is not chemotherapy, but immune adoption, when uh, donor uh, blood cells, immune cells, kill the tumor cells. There are also some new drugs such as brentuximab and checkpoint inhibitors who cures uh, lymphoma quite effective. Of course, um, uh, oncologists knew some drugs which uh, will not cure but uh, which will permit uh, the patient to live with his lymphoma for some years. And of course, new drugs are appearing and all patients are strongly advised to participate in clinical trials, in comparison groups or in a, or in a trial group. And of course, they have a lot of drugs uh, for symptomatic therapy. So we talked about the first line, the second line, and the third line, and other lines of chemotherapy. Most uh, people with Hodgkin's lymphoma are cured, and many of them ask us what to do next. What uh, are mm, their steps after completion of therapy? I think that the main step is to resume to the normal life, but uh, there are small mm, recommendation to avoid the delayed problems of chemo and lymphoma. The irradiation um, can um, cause uh, the second tumor. So for irradiated uh, patients it's um, very advised to perform chest CT scan annually. If uh, the uh, neck and, uh, and upper mediastinum upper um, areas of chest were radiated, it's worth to do the tireoid stimulating hormone in urine to, uh, to check for low function of tireoid gland. For women, it's worth to do mammography after eight years or after reaching four years old. And if the radiation was uh, from 10 to 30 years, then MRI of breast is strongly advised. To all patients, uh, uh, CT scan is also advised for if the patient smokes, because smoking is harmful to everybody. Flu vac vaccination annually also is uh, needed because uh, our um, patients unfortunately are more susceptible to flu. And uh, uh, ultrasonic, exam ultrasonic examination of the heart is also advised every year after age 40 or after eight years after the end of treatment. And of course, clinical blood tests annually. And 
and you'll visit Prodoctor with all these results. As I have already said, a lot of people, uh, a lot of patients with the uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma are young. And uh, what to do is the um, healthy woman after chemotherapy is pregnant. Can uh, she uh, deliver? What to do? How to manage them? And now the response is uh, very concrete. Pregnancy is possible and the management of pregnancy and childbirth should be as if there were no lymphoma at all. Uh, some women have uh, uh, hormonal disturbances after chemotherapy and uh, many of them are advised to take hormone replacement therapy. Hormone replacement therapy is possible, effective and safe for patients after chemotherapy, after Hodgkin's lymphoma. Very worried question, how to notice a relapse? And uh, I would like to repeat that about half of patients have residual lymph node enlargement. It's no good, it's no bad. After some years, uh, they can regress or they can be stable. Do we need to perform CT scans to check them? The uh, respond is very concrete. Preventive CT scans without any symptoms or especially preventive PET scans are useless. Uh, PET scan is very important in the initial uh, staging, initial diagnosing, but when care, but there is one big problem. PET scan very often shows uh, false positive results. For example, when uh, normal cells come to clean after tumor in the lymph nodes, they also have uh, their local normal high metabolism. And uh, these lymph nodes without the enlargement can light as a Christmas tree. And of course, uh, it, is the, it will be the cause of uh, scaring and worrying of the patients and doctors. But this is normal uh, lightning. And uh, if the lymph nodes have normal sizes, this information is useless. So, PET scan is unavailable and should be avoided after chemotherapy without evidence of progress. The CT scan is uh, the same because um, uh, if the patient, uh, if a patient lies, lays on the CT scan table a little bit higher or a little bit uh, lower, the CT scan can um, cut uh, by another angle and uh, 20 residual millimeters can shift to 22 millimeters and the description will be a relapse under the question. So the patient without any symptoms will get uh, a few months of worry or maybe usefulness um, biopsy. So. A lot of trials all over the world showed that preventive CT scans and PET scans are useless and that the, these uh, examinations, examinations should be administered only if the patient uh, has any complaints such as pain or P symptoms or lymph node enlargement or something else. Okay, but uh, maybe it's better to notice the early stage of relapse, maybe because the early stage of lymphoma initially has a little bit better prognosis, a little bit, but uh, this works only initially, because uh, if we talk about the relapse, the prognosis depends on the response to anti-tumor chemotherapy, but not on the number of nodes. Mm, so, and uh, it was also proved by some clinical trials. So it's better to live by usual life and uh, uh, you should uh, come to doctor again only if uh, you will feel some unexplained complaints or if you will notice the lymph node enlargement. Relapse risks decrease rapidly after a year of remission, especially after three or five years of uh, living without lymphoma. 
One more question from our patients is uh, uh, can we go on a vacation to uh, hot uh, countries? There is no proven harm of climate changing during summer holidays, so you, you can. But if you like to lay in the sun, if you would like to have light tan, you should uh, use the uh, sun cream with the sun protection factor over 30. Mm. Laying in the sun is not useful to all people and it's better to roll to use such cream. What about sauna, swimming pool? Of course, you can visit it uh, without exhaustion. So, we talked about Hodgkin's lymphoma, about staging and treating, about lifestyle and diet, about what to do after chemotherapy. I thank you for your attention. If you have any question, you can contact me. I wrote my contacts on the screen. I will be very grateful for any feedback. Thank you for your attention.